In Storyline, there are two main ways to give feedback in your drag and drop interactions. You can either wait until learners click submit or show feedback instantly the moment they drop something. In this video, I'll show you exactly how to build that second version so your learners get immediate feedback. This is a simple drag and drop interaction with three categories. When I drop something incorrectly, I get this little shake animation and I get the X. And when I drop something correct, I get a check mark. And once I have dropped everything correct, I get this feedback frame, I get some feedback and the next button is activated. And um, let's look at how to set this up. If you'd like, you can follow along with the practice file linked in the description. Here's the practice file. Let's look at the practice scene where we only have the slight elements and no interaction set up yet. Um, double click it. First of all, we have our drop zones. These are rectangles and they are named drop one, drop two and drop three. And then we have our drag elements. They are up here. They are stacked on top of each other on the slide and they are named drag one, drag two, drag three. And let's choose the fireworks for example, and then click on states. Each of them has a normal state, a drop correct state and a drop incorrect state. These are built-in states in Articulate Storyline, but more on that later. Notice that the check mark and the X have a grow animation. So when I double click and then click on the check mark and then click on the animations tab, they have a grow animation. So you know if you're planning on recreating something similar. And for most of them, the states are already set up but let me quickly show you how to add one that is missing. So um, in the timeline, we're going to choose the passport. In this uh, practice file, the passport is missing the drop incorrect state. So let's click on states and you can see there is no drop incorrect state. So I'm going to click on edit states. Then I will click on new state and from the drop down. I will choose drop incorrect. The states that you see here in the drop down are all built in states, and this means that Storyline activates these automatically. You don't need any triggers to activate these, and that's a good thing. Okay, so uh, yeah, drop incorrect is what I want to add. Uh, to keep things consistent, I will copy the icon uh, from another element. And here comes a little time saver. I could switch to another object via the timeline or the slide, but I can also use this drop down uh, over here on the right. I can um, click on it and then I can just choose the shampoo. And then from here, I can uh, click on the drop incorrect state, copy the, the icon. I will click the icon, I will copy it using Control C on my keyboard, I will use the drop down again, switch back to the passport and then I will hit Control V on my keyboard and just like that I have the icon copied to my state and uh, normally you might think about using the format painter to copy states but in this case this won't work because these um, icons uh, right here that I've set up. The Format Painter will also copy those. So in this case, this doesn't make sense. I'm just going to click on Done. Now the basics are set up on this slide. And um, now let's turn this into a drag and drop question. And sure, we could create a whole bunch of drag and drop triggers, like change the state of the drag item to drop incorrect when the user drops it on a certain target, but there's a much easier way. And I cannot stress this enough. Um, 
please do yourself a favor and convert something like this into a freeform question. It will save you creating so many triggers. You just have to know about this, have practiced this once, and then you're going to use freeform questions a lot more often. So yeah, let's click on the insert tab and then click on convert to freeform and then drag and drop is selected. This is what we want. And then we can click on OK. Now we're in something that is called form view. And now we just need to map the drag items to the correct drop targets. And um, yeah, let's choose the drag items, drag one, drag two, and drag three. And now just match the drop targets. So drop one, drop two and drop three. And this is where the um, naming of these elements comes in really handy. We can do a preview of this right now. And we can see that the elements snap into the middle of our drop zones. But we don't get any feedback yet. We only get it when we click on submit. And then you can see that the um, states are triggered. We want immediate feedback. So we want the feedback once something is dropped. So let's change this. I will close the preview. To get immediate feedback on our articulate storyline drag and drop interaction, we will do the following steps. So we will open the drag and drop options and then we will uncheck delay item drop states until interaction is submitted. And then we will click on OK. Yeah, let's do a preview of this. And you can see that the states are triggered immediately. Yeah, if this is helpful to you, uh, the easiest way you can support me is just by hitting the thumbs up that tells YouTube to show this to more storyline users. And I will be forever grateful to you. All right, you might have noticed that the items are stacking in the middle of the drop zone, which makes them harder to move. So if I want to get to the shampoos, yeah, it's not that easy. You have to get the correct one. Yeah, let's let's change this. Um, I'm going to close my preview. Once again, in the drag and drop options, I will make sure that the uh, dropped items are snapped into a tile, into a tile layout. This is useful when drag rectangles fit neatly into the drop zones. And another thing that I'm going to enable is return item to start point if dropped outside any drop target. This keeps everything neat and ensures that learners only drop inside the targets. And I'm also going to enable reveal drag items one at a time. This way, learners can focus on one item at a time. And you can even change the sequence independently of the stacking order in the timeline. And in my opinion, this is a great feature. And um, yeah, I'm just going to change this because right now it would be just first there's drag item one and it goes into the first category and then second into the middle and then third onto the right. And I think that this is a bit too easy. So I'm going to switch things up a bit around here, maybe like so. And then I'm going to click on OK. And um, yeah, let's do another preview of the slide. And you can see that right now um, I get the feedback immediately. Let's do something wrong. The incorrect feed feedback also immediately. And then they are organized into a tile layout. And this makes it easy for me to rearrange something. This looks good so far. And we're almost done. And up to this point, we haven't added a single trigger. And that's all thanks to converting this slide to a freeform question. But uh, now this will change because I want to make incorrect drops even more noticeable. So let's add a 
shake animation to the wrong drops. Um, we need to switch back to slide view right now. Make this a bit bigger, okay. I'm going to select all my drag elements just by drawing a rectangle around them. I can look at the timeline and make sure I have selected all my three drag elements. And then I will go to the animations tab. I will add an emphasis animation and it's going to be the shake. And I'm going to set the duration to 0.5 seconds and the effect options to high. Storyline has added the default triggers for the emphasis animation and it is to emphasize the element using shake when the user clicks drag one. So um, we don't want this to happen when the learner clicks. We want this to happen when something is dropped wrong. So uh, let's change the trigger. I will just uh, double click it and then I will set it to um, when and then I need my drag and drop uh, events when the object is dropped on and it is about the drag one object and the wrong targets are drop two and drop three. So I'm going to choose them from the list drop two and drop three and then I'm going to click outside of the list and um, yeah, this looks good. And I'm going to click on OK. And then I will copy this trigger to the other drag elements. And um, I have clicked on copy uh, the selected trigger right here. And then I will um, mark the other two drag elements. So shampoo and holding down uh, the control key, also fireworks. And now I can just paste the trigger. And um, now I have to edit these. So um, it's right now here, the animation is unassigned. I'm going to choose shake. And the same goes for the drag three, also shake. And um, now I just have to adjust the um, targets. So for drop two, wrong targets are one and three. So not two, but one. And then I will click OK. And then for the drag three item, wrong is um, one and two. So I'm just going to uncheck three and check one. And um, yeah, this, no didn't take it. Let's try it again. Drop one and drop two. Why? It didn't display it in the trigger wizard, but um, we can see it right now. Um, it's drop one and drop two. Okay, and now we only need to delete these two old triggers that are still activating the shake animation when the user clicks. So I'm going to um, select them holding down the control key and then I'm just going to click on delete and say yes I can do a preview and now we can see that we get a incorrect state and the shake animation and um, yeah let's do something wrong once more in my opinion this is a nice combination of visual cues and um, now we need to finish the interaction we have two options and um, yeah I will show them to you in the let's click on story view and then in the demo scene here we have two ways uh, so let's preview the scene the first option is to keep the submit button and um, yeah learners can drop items and uh, yeah let's do this the right way and then they can click on submit and then they can see feedback. You can also edit the feedback in the question editor. I will just uh, show you where you can do it. So on the submit slide, we have the question editor form view and then here you can edit what is set on the feedback layer right here on or on the different feedback layers right here. 
And um, yeah, learners will then continue on from the feedback layer. And then we have our second option and it is to remove the submit button. So here I have went to the slide properties or layer properties and I have unchecked submit. So there is no submit button for this um, slide here. It's called no submit. And um, yeah, let's do a preview of this. Oops, I think I previewed the whole scene, but yeah, it doesn't matter. I can just click on no submit and you can see I have no submit button and the next uh, button is disabled. And when we drop everything correctly right here, we get this uh, feedback frame and we get some text on the slide. And um, yeah, this highlights success and lets learners move straight on without clicking an extra button. So um, all this here happens on a complete layer that I have set up. So it's a custom complete layer and it tells us we're done. And you can even then when this happens, you can also enable the next button. So in the start of this slide, it was disabled and now it is enabled. And um, this option requires a few more triggers to set up, but don't worry, it's very manageable. And um, yeah, you can look at how I have uh, set this up here in the triggers and the slide layers when you download the practice file and then look at the two options in the demo scene. And yeah, choose the approach that fits your learners best. And if you'd like to see another way of building custom drag and drop interactions in Storyline, this time without adding any extra triggers, check out the video that's on screen right now. I'll walk you through it step by step and I hope to see you in that video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.